Hard drives, which used to be the preferred non-volatile storage for laptops and PCs, have gradually been replaced by solid-state drives. However, for those requiring extensive storage capacity, hard drives remain the preferred choice today. The drives we look at today have long surpassed their useful lifespan. I found all of them at my local scrapyard during the time when I thought, hey cool, old hard drives, maybe they still work. The truth is, less than 20% of the drives I picked up actually work, so I stopped searching for them. If you browse through the videos on my channel, you will find one about this Connor hard drive. The project was unsuccessful, but a nice experience nonetheless. Now, I only consider taking a drive if it comes in a computer case, like this old Seagate drive. Unfortunately, like all the other drives you see here, the Seagate drive doesn't work either. However, I haven't given up hope on some of them yet. But for today, we are looking at truly broken drives that I don't want to spend time trying to fix. Oh, and then there is this one drive from Western Digital that I want to look at. I really don't know why I picked it up. I guess I felt sorry for it. I will clean it and have a look at the PCB under the microscope. Since the case is full of scratches, I suspect we might find cracked SMDs. This means that we will probably see some soldering today as well. However, if the drive still doesn't work after that, I won't invest any more time in it, as I'm fairly certain it has sustained damage from external impacts. So, today I want to share the sounds of broken hard drives with you before they return to the scrapyard. We will also open each drive to take a look inside. Then let's start with the first drive, a Quantum Fireball ST. Uh, this will be a little bit of a different video what I usually do, so there will be not much scripting. These are three hard disks that I picked for today's experiment. Um, they all have a problem. I already tested them somehow to get a little bit of an idea what are we going to listen to today. Uh, we will start with the center one, a Quantum Fireball ST. I don't know what size it has, but yeah, um, I guess we will just plug it in and we will see and hear what this drive is going to do. So I'll put these other two for now to the side. On the back, yeah, we see some damage here, the connectors. Oh, there is nothing we can hear right now. So let's just plug it in and see what happens. Okay. It gets slower. And it stops. Okay, let's not torture the drive any further. Let's just see what's in it. So these drives, I picked them up some time ago from my usual place where I get old hardware and I stopped looking for hard drives because I think 80% are dead. So even if I find a very nice old hard drive from 20 or 25 years ago, most likely they are not working. I may have opened this drive already once because I see I removed the... Oh, and I see this is loose already. So I, I probably looked into this uh, one time and I was just curious what was going on. And uh, let's see, can I remove this? The rubber seal is quite sticky. Okay, uh, did I? I guess there is another screw here that I forgot about. Yeah, I definitely was in here before. No, this is... This was already removed. Oh, okay, there you go. So, let's look into drive number one.
Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but here are definitely some scratches on the platter. And otherwise, I don't know. Let's see and switch on the drive one more time. Okay, I think that was enough. So I assume that there is another platter because this drive has one, two, three, four platters. So I'm assuming that one of the other platters on the more lower levels is scratched badly. There's definitely one. Oh, <laughs> there we go. This is probably the one that made all that noise. Okay, here's the secret of the noise of hard disk number one and here are the four platters of the quantum fireball. Next we have a Seagate and this has two gigabytes. And I wrote no actuator, so most likely I uh, took the arm out from the from the quantum fireball. We'll see if we can see something under the microscope. Yeah, so the actuator seems to be stuck. But that drive also makes some funny noise. I don't know if you can hear that, but if I move it, if I if I twist it a little bit. I don't know if you can hear that, but it makes a funny noise. This drive was not opened yet by me and I don't know how to open it because I don't see any screws here on the, on the surface. I don't feel anything. So I don't know. Let's have a look and listen to it first. Okay. <laughs> okay, enough. I have no idea what's happening here. It sounds like it tries to spin up and then Maybe it tries to read information of the platters to initialize the disk, but the arms are not moving. So what I'll do, I'll first maybe have a look here underneath if we could maybe get the PCB off and then uh, see if we can see some screws that are maybe hidden under all the electronic here. Okay, so here we have only a few push contacts that are just connecting to those pins that are exposed. Ooh. So there are just a few exposed contacts. 
Hallo. How do you get in there? So after 10 seconds of googling, I didn't find anything, but I, I did see a warranty void sticker. What if the screws, this is a double housing maybe, and it's just kind of taped over the second, the internal housing. So. Let's first get that warranty sticker off. That's uh, the main reason why we can't get in there. So let's just slowly get there. Yes. Okay. So, and... Uh, Ha ha ha! Okay. So, <laughs> by the way, I think this is part of the read head that is not supposed to be dangling like this. So... Oh, this thing is damaged. Unfortunately, there is nothing we could have done for this hard drive. And this time we have a Western Digital. So we had a Quantum, then a Seagate, and we will have a Western Digital. And I have a bonus drive, which I showed you at the beginning, the one with a very dirty PCB. Uh, but we'll get to this. So let's uh, listen to the Western Digital. Okay, there's nothing happening. Maybe this one needs an IDE cable connected to it to get some signals from the computer. Okay, let's try again. No. Now this drive is completely dead. Nothing. By the way, before I plug any of these drives into a PC or a power supply, I will check if the 5 or the 12 volt rail is shorted. So this is not the case here. Since this is not a repair video and I'm really not an expert when it comes to hard drives, I know there are some diodes in there and maybe a fuse that may be broken or blown up. So I'll keep this drive, I will have a look at this in my spare time just trying to see if I can figure out what's going on with it. But let's move on to the last drive for today. So this is the drive that uh, we have seen at the very beginning with a very very dirty PCB, but I cleaned it. I also fixed the IDE connectors. The IDE connector is probably okay. The problem is that there are some issues on the PCB, like you can see here is a chip and I've seen some questionable SMD components that may be cracked. So before I start doing anything with this drive, I think it's best to have a look under the microscope.
so let's see what happens when we plug this drive in. I'm, I'm sure there's this is the best I can do for this drive. Let's see if it works, if it spins up, if it makes any weird noises, or if we have fixed it. <laughs> I did hear something. But I guess this drive doesn't doesn't work either. Wow, that looks clean. Yeah, there is no power. There is no power. I don't feel any resistance. Actuators are not engaged at all. So most likely there is another electrical issue. So, four drives, all of them don't work. And this is it for today. Let me know if you enjoyed this content that is a little bit less scripted. But uh, that doesn't mean that I will never do scripted videos ever again. I do have some boards that require hours of work. Of, of course, I cannot do something like this in, in this setup. But uh, yeah, um, I'm planning on having sometimes videos like this in between. And that's it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.